Hey everybody, it's Teresa. Welcome to my channel. I'm going to make a pair of earrings today and I'm going to use some of the products that came in the most recent Potomac Beats Treasure Edition subscription box. The one for April 2024. It's called Spun Sugar Serenade. I'll put a link in the corner of this video and in the description box below to the unboxing video I did for this subscription in case you want to watch it where I go over everything that came in the box. I'll also put a link to the page on the Potomac Beads website where you would go to sign up for either one of their subscription boxes if it's something that you're interested in. And of course you can always shop around on their website. They have an amazing website. I'll also link their YouTube channel in the video below, in the description box below too. They have an amazing YouTube channel too. Uh, I'm going to be using the 4mm Potomac Crystal Bicones that came in the box. The color is Light Peridot. I've got some seed beads here. These are all Miyuki seed beads. I've got some Galvanized Silver 11 Delicas. Some Dyed Opaque Pink uh, Regular 11 seed beads. Some Dyed Opaque Spruce Regular 11 seed beads. These are the 8-0s that came in the box. They're Duracoat Opaque Tea Rose is the color on these. And then I've got some 15-0 uh, Galvanized Silver Seed Beads that I'm going to use. Uh, and here I've got two of the uh, Perfect Form Drops that came in the box. Uh, I've got a couple of ear wires, a couple of eye pins because I think I'm going to uh, make links with a couple of these little bicones and attach them to the top of the form and attach them to my ear wire that way. I say I think because I've not done this yet. <laughs> I usually make an earring ahead of time and then make the mate to it on video, but I've not done this yet. So I'm not sure, but I think that's what I'm going to do. And I've got a couple of 5mm jump rings in here uh, to attach my link that I make to my ear wire into my drop because I'm pretty sure the eye on my eye pins are not big enough to go through this uh, drop. It's a, it's kind of thick. It's, um, it's not real thick, but it's kind of thick and I think my eye pins, the eye on them are just, is just too little to do that with. So I'm going to attach it with a jump ring, I think. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be using my six pound fire line and smoke. I've got a size 11 beading needle. I think that'll be fine. I'm not going to be going through these beads a whole lot, so I think a size 11 beading needle will be fine. I'll be using my scissors to cut my fire line and my chain nose pliers, my round nose pliers, my cutters, my bent chain nose pliers, and I seem to always find a need for my tweezers, whether I tweezer pliers, whether I think I do or not. <laughs> I think that's everything. I'll try to find links and put links to everything I'm using in the description box below. So hold on, I'll get some of this out of the way and I'll be back. Okay, I'm going to start with my little component here, my perfect form drop, uh, teardrop and uh, my delicas. And I'm going to be doing brick stitch around this component. I mentioned when I did the unboxing for this subscription that I had used these before to brick stitch around them and make earrings and I had a lady request that I do that on video so that's what I'm going to do. I've got a video where I did brick stitch and made some earrings around these exact same drops but it's been quite a while. It was one of my earlier videos and I just wanted to do it again with the beads that came in this box so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I've got my needle threaded. I'm leaving about a six inch tail just enough to put a needle on later and sew it back in. Uh, I do this a little bit differently than you'll probably see anybody else do it. Most people when they brick stitch around a the component they take the tail of their uh, thread and tie it onto their component and that just never works for me. When I try to tie it on there it, the knot ends up coming loose and everything comes loose. <laughs> I don't know why but it just does. So I, I just use a stop bead. So I'm going to pick up one of my delicas, and this is different too, because most of the time when you start brick stitch, you start with two. But for this first row, when I start, I'm just going to be using one. Uh, when I try to do two, like most people do, I, I can't get them to lay flat against the form for some reason. I don't know why. So I've got picked up a delica. 
I'm going to go from the back of the component through the front and I'm going to hold that Delica with my finger and not let it go through there. Hold it against the outside of my component there and bring it down until my stop bead stops it. And now I'm going to go back up through the bottom of that Delica. And I'm going to hold on to it and I'm going to pull my thread through. And that sets that against my uh, the outside of my component there. And I'm going to push this up. Uh, and now I'm just going to do that again. I'm going to pick up another Delica. I'm going to drop it down to my component. This big stop bead wasn't in the way. It'd be easier for y'all to see what I'm doing. But if I pull it out of the way, it's going to get loose. So I'm going to drop it down there. I'm going to hold it up against the top of my component. I'm going to go through the back of the component. And then I'm going to go up the bottom of this delicate. You don't want to go through the hole that's attached where your thread is attached to this bead. You want to go through the bottom here. Pull the thread through and see that bead is not close to the bead that I put on there yet but uh, I'm gonna tie my stop bead down here because if I don't that first one's not gonna lay right uh, to get this bead up close to this bead that first bead that I put on you just hold on to your thread and pull it and it'll pull over close to that one and just tighten it up so they're sitting there nice and next to each other now and whenever I take my uh, stop bead off and sew this thread back in it'll straighten them up even more so now I'm going to pick up another Delica I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my needle through here so I don't have to drop it down every time and then I'm just going to hold my bead right there. And now I'm going to go back up the bottom of it. Like that. And pull it through. And my bead that I just put on is never up close to the beads that I've already put on. So I just hold on to it and push it up against the others like that. Now I'm going to pick up another Delica. I'm going to put my needle through the back. I'm going to hold on to my Delica and not let it slide through there. And now I'm going to go up the bottom of it. And then I'm going to hold on to my thread and slide it up against the ones I've already put on there. So I've got four on there now. I'll do one more and then I'll do the rest of them off camera. So I'm going to pick up one more. <clears throat> I'm going to go in through the back of my component. Hold, hold on to my bead. Don't let it slide through there. Then go up the bottom of the Delica that I just put on. Pull my thread through. And then slide it up next to the ones I've already put on there and you're going to end up with your beads with their holes sitting straight up like that and that's all there is to it so I'm going to keep doing this until I get around the component I don't know how many beads it's going to take me because I've not done this yet but uh, I'll count and tell you how many it, I use to go around it your count doesn't have to be the same as mine though I mean if you want to leave a little bit more space at the top here than I do on each side just whatever you think is pretty uh, but I'm just going to probably go around almost all of it and uh, when I get that done I'll be back and while I'm gone I'm going to take this stop bead off and sew this thread in because to get it out of my way uh, I'll just go back and forth between the beads several times until I get it locked in and then I'll 
cut my thread off. So when I get all that done, I'll be back. Okay, I've got all the way around my form here now, and uh, I used 38 Delicas. But like I said, you don't have to use the same count that I do. And now my next row, I'm going to use these 11-0 pink beads. And these are not Delicas, they're just regular pink beads. And this time I am going to start with two. So I'm going to pick up two. I'm coming out of this Delica on the end here. I'm not going to go under the first thread bridge, I'm going to go under the second thread bridge. Pull my thread through, lay those out there with their holes up. Now I'm going to go up this pink bead and then to straighten these two up I'm going to go back down this first pink bead and into the second Delica there. And then I'm going to come over here to this third Delica and go up it and go up that pink bead. And that will straighten those two pink beads there up. Now I'm going to pick up another 11 0 and I'm going to go into the next thread bridge. Can't get my needle under there. Okay. Pull it through. Now I'm going to go up the bottom of that bead I just put on. And it is very, very common when you go back up that bead, you accidentally, without knowing it, go back under your thread bridge. And when that happens, your bead's going to fall off. And that's nothing to be frustrated about. I've made, I've done a whole lot of brick stitch. <laughs> and that still happens to me. So it's not, it's nothing to be frustrated about. It just is something that happens. Now, uh, these 11 -0, even though these are 11 -0 seed beads and these are 11 -0 delicas, the 11 -0 regular seed beads are a little bit bigger than the 11 -0 delicas. So I'm not going to be able to go under every single thread bridge because if I do my beads are going to be bunched up. So I, you just have to look as you go and see where you think the next bead should go. Like if you think going under the very next thread bridge is going to crowd your beads, you just want to skip and go under the next one. And I think I'm going to try that right here. I'm not going to go under this thread bridge here. I'm going to go under this next one here. And pull my thread through and go back up the bottom of the speed. Now if you do that and if it looks like there's too much, I think that's okay, but if it looks like there's too much room between your beads, you just take it out. It's, it's not hard at all to take out. I'll go ahead and take this one out to show you. You just go back down your bead there and loosen your bead and go back under that thread bridge. And I said this would be easy and it probably won't work. Okay, there it did. <laughs> so it's really, it's not hard to take out at all if it turns out that they're either too close to the for, to the one you just did or they're too far away. You can just take it out and put it back. Uh, so I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna go under my thread bridge, go up the bottom of my bead. And just straighten it up there and like that one's not sitting very straight but when I go in when I do the next one it'll straighten it up so I'm gonna pick up another one and uh, I'm gonna go into the next thread bridge and back up the bottom of this bead that. Now since these beads are bigger and I'm not going under every single thread bridge, I won't have as many, I won't have 38 when I get around with these pink beads. I don't know how many I'll have, I'll tell you when I get done. 
but I won't have 38. So I'm just going to pick up another pink bead, go into the next thread bridge. Pull my thread through, go up the bottom of this pink bead I just put on, like that. So I'm just going to keep doing that until I get all the way around, and when I get all the way around, I'll be back. Okay, I've got all the way around with my pink beads now, and now I'm going to do a row with my green beads. And these are the same size as the pink beads, these green beads are. So I'm pick up two of my green beads, 11 -0 green beads. I'm not going to go under that first thread bridge. I'm going to go under the second one. I'm going to go up this green bead here because I need to straighten these two up. I'm going to go down this green bead, this first one, and into this second pink bead. And then I'm going to go over here and go up this third pink bead and up that second green bead to straighten those two up there. Now I'm pick up another green bead and go under the next thread bridge. And go up the bottom of this green bead. Now even though these are the same size, the green my green the the green beads are eleven o's and the pink beads are eleven o's. They're exactly the same size. I'm going to end up with more green beads around. I don't know if I said I had thirty four of the pink beads around, but I'll end up with more than thirty four of these green beads because every time I put a row around, it's making my diameter bigger. So I'm going to have to have more beads. If I put a green bead under every thread bit bridge, my green beads would be too far apart, especially when I get down here to this curved part is usually where I have to, I'll end up having to go through under the same thread bridge twice a few times, or I don't know how many more I'll have than 34 of the green beads, but it's the same as before. You just kind of have to judge as you go and see where you think the next bead needs to be. So I'm going to pick up another green bead, go under my next thread bridge. Go up the bottom of it, and then I'm just going to keep doing that. And whenever I get to a part that it looks like if I go under the next thread bridge, my green beads are going to be too far apart, I'll put a green bead, uh, two green beads under the same thread bridge. And like I said, most of the time that happens when you get down here to this curved part. So I'm just going to keep doing this. And when I get done with this row, I'll come back and I'll tell you how many green beads I used, and then we'll uh, do the next row. So I'll be back. Okay, I've got all the way around with my green beads now, and I, I had 35 of the green beads, so I only had one more of the green beads than I did the pink beads. Now I'm going to do my 8 O's here. So I'm going to pick up two 8 O's, and I'm not going to go under the first thread bridge. I'm going to go under the second one. I'm going to go up this 8 0 here because I have to straighten these two up. Go back down this first 8 0. Back into the second green bead there. Back up the third green bead from the end. And up that second 8 0. To straighten those two 8 0's up. Now I pick up another 8 0. And I'm going to go on, go under what looks like is the next thread bridge I need to go under. Because since these 8 0's are so much bigger than the 11 0's that I just put on, I'm definitely not going to be able to go under every thread. But I won't have nearly as many. I, I had 35 of the green beads. I won't have nearly that many 8 0's because I'm going to have to skip uh, thread bridges because these are so much bigger. So I'm going to pick up another 8 0 go under what looks like the next best thread bridge is, and then go up the bottom. 
and I'm just going to keep doing that until I get around. Uh, I, I would like, I hope when I get done that I have an even number of 8-0s because I, to do the embellishment I'm wanting to do, I need to have an even number. So I hope that I will, but I don't know. So when I get to get this row done, I'll be back. Okay, I've got all the way around with my 8-0s now, and I had 26 of my 8-0s, which is good because I wanted an even number. <laughs> so now I'm gonna, I've am gonna i got my 15-0s here. I'm going to pick up... I think I need to pick up five 15 O's. And I'm going to go from the top of this 8 O into this 8 O. And then I'm going to go up the next 8 O. And I'm going to pick up five more. And I know those don't look very pretty right now, but. I'm hoping when I do my next round that they're, I'm going to straighten them up and they're going to look better. <laughs> so I'm going to pick up five more 15 O's. Go from the top of this 8 into the top of this 8 -0. I'm going to go up my next 8 -0. Pick up five 15 O's. Go from the top of this side out into the top of this side out. And go up this next side out. I'm just going to keep doing that until I get all the way around. When I get all the way around, I'll come back and we'll put the back ones on. So I'll be back. Okay, I'm almost all the way around now. I need one more uh, five of my five seed beads. I'm coming out the top of this side out. I'm going to go into this side out. And I need to, well, I'll just go on the side oh for now. Now I need to turn my thread around and be coming back out this side oh so that I can get up to the tip of this little, uh, these five seed beads that I just put on. So I'm just going to sew down into this green bead here on the end. And it doesn't matter how you get around here. You can do whatever how you want to. Don't get caught around that top there. Now I'm going to go back up into the second green bead. And I'm going to come back out that 8 on the end there. Now I'm going to turn it around here. And I'm going to go up three of my 15 O's. And I've got my back cones here. And this is going to take 12 back cones to go around here. So I'm going to pick up a 15 O, a back cone, and a 15 O. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to find the third bead of these five. I'm going to go in it. Put my back cone in there. I'm going to pick up a 15 0 back cone and a 15 0. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to find the third 15 0. Go in it. Put my back on in there. I'll pick up a 15 0 back on and a 15 0. I'm going to go over here and find the third 15 0 in this little pico of 15 0s I've made and go in it. I'm just going to do that all the way around and then I'll be done and I'm going to sew my thread in and I'll just sew in and out several times to crisscross my thread and sew my thread in and then when I come back we'll 
figure out how I'm going to attach it to the ear wire. So <laughs> I'll be back. Okay, I've got my earring done here. And now I'm going to make a little link here with my eye pen and my bicone. This is a 20 gauge eye pen. I'm going to take my pliers. I'll go a little bit above the bead so that I don't crack my bead. Bend the wire over at a 90 degree angle. I'll take my cutters and cut off and leave about a fourth of an inch of the pen. I'm going to take my round nose pliers and I'm going to go to the end here make sure there's nothing sticking out. And I always start my loop down here on the barrel and then I go up to the tip and finish my loop so that I don't have a huge loop. And just keep rolling until I get my loop made. And my loops are usually not uh, facing the same way so I usually have to take two pairs of pliers and twist them around to get them to face the same way. I'm going to open that one and close it again to get it good and closed. Now I'm going to take a, my 5mm jump ring. I might could have used a 4mm, I don't know. I was afraid it would be too small, so I just got a 5mm out. I'm going to put it on my earring here. Thread on my little link that I just made. Close my jump ring back. Make sure to get it closed back really well. Okay, now I'm just going to take this loop at the, well, at the top here and open it up and thread on my ear wire and close it back. So there's my little earring. I guess I should have zoomed out and not been so close in doing that. I don't know if y'all can see what I was doing. But there's my little earring. So I'm going to make another one and then I'll come back and I'll have a pair and we'll see what I got. So I'll be back. Okay, there's my pair of brick stitch earrings made with some of the beads from the latest Potomac Beads Treasure Edition subscription box. The one for April 2024 called Spun Sugar Serenade. Like I said, I'll leave a link in the description box below to the uh, page on the Potomac Beads website where you can read about their both of their subscription boxes that they have and where you can subscribe if it's something that you're interested in. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. As always, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate those of you who have subscribed to my channel and watched my videos and liked and commented on my videos. I have a website where I sell my jewelry. I also sell gift cards and some extra beads and findings that I have. It's Teresa's Handmade Jewelry, and I'll put a link to it in the description box below in case you're interested, along with a link to my Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and my email. If you haven't, I'd really love it if you'd subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified when I upload a new video. So until next time, I hope you all have a great day. Take care.